experience. It's a rare combo, but it's possessed by both Nick Diaz from the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu camp and the Judo Wizard, Carl Parisian. 21-year-old Carl the Heat Parisian trains under highest on grappling master Gokor Chavichin and brings a very aggressive ground game into the octagon. In his UFC debut against Dave Strasser, Carl put on a clinic of spectacular throws and submissions. Don't blink when this unorthodox young welterweight is in the octagon. All I know, I'm gonna be aggressive like I always am, trying to take him down, go for the submissions, go for the ground and pound and whatever, just try to overwhelm him everything I can. I'm gonna try to beat Nick Diaz in a way that people will say, wow. Nick Diaz is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, but it was his striking ability that made people stand up and notice him when he knocked out ruthless Robbie Lawler at UFC 47. With great submissions and deadly striking, this 21-year-old could be a force in the UFC for years to come. I think it's a kind of a bad matchup for me in a way. Um, but, uh, you know, you just got to work through it, do what you got to do. And, I mean, uh, I've been working on a lot of things for this fight, so see see what I can do. I'm doing my best. Our tale of the tape brought to you by Nature's Purest Nutritional Supplements, high performance supplements for high performance individuals. 21 years old, although Parisian is a few months older than the six foot, 168 pound Nick Diaz. Well, Carl, while Nick was being introduced, is now fully geared and protected as Mario Yamasaki is our referee. Here we go, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Here we go. Big matchup of welterweights. Carl Parisian and Nick Diaz. Parisian in the gray trunks, Diaz in the black trunks. Carl does a good job of tying him up, got a clinch. Now this is Carl's world. Oh, and a good Carl's clinch. got beautiful takedown. But Nick Diaz is no stranger to the ground. He's got excellent submissions. And a matter of fact, before his fight with Robbie Lawler, everybody thought that's really his primary game. And then he was always saying, I've got great hands, nobody's seen them. I, I fought Jeremy Jackson a smart fight. That's why I didn't try to box with him. Referring to his, uh, his previous UFC opponent, who was a really dangerous striker, he goes, I was smart. I played it smart, but you're gonna see my hands. Look at this. Nick Diaz going for a Kimura, which is Carlos move. He's got it. He's in half guard here. Oh, no, Carl's mounted. Wow, he's still got it locked in. This is, he's got his back. If he can roll over, he can take Carl's back. All right, now Carl's got his back. Oh, wow. oh what and a great chest match early. Wow, very nice. Parisian ducks back in to Nick Diaz's guard. Nick Diaz has an excellent guard. Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Demonstrated there by Nick Diaz. He comes out of the Caesar Gracie camp, which is a, a really aggressive school of some excellent grapplers. Most of those guys uh, are, uh, unlike a lot of jiu-jitsu schools, they train primarily without the gi. So a lot of these guys, all of Dave Terrell students, all these guys are all like experts in no-gi grappling. A lot of times you see in the UFC, you'll see a guy who's phenomenal at jiu-jitsu with the gi on, and then he gets into a situation like this, and he really is looking for his handles that he usually holds on to by using the collar and the sleeves, and he doesn't know what to do. You're not gonna see that with the Caesar Gracie guys. Well, you go way back to the infancy of the sport. That's how Hoist Gracie choked out Ken Shamrock, was by utilizing the gi. No longer do we see the gi being sported. Yeah, exactly. Parisian and Diaz pushing the pace here in the first two minutes of round one. Welterweight matchup scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Down they go again, this time courtesy of Nick Diaz. Carlos got Nick's right arm tied up here. This could be a dangerous spot. Carlos got very unorthodox submissions, and he pulls him, he's very explosive, and pulls him out of nowhere. Now, Carlos said he feels like overall he's fought tougher guys in his career. But there's no doubt that Nick Diaz is one of those tough guys who he's facing right now. This is where Nick Diaz has got to be careful when he ties up with Kara. Nick Diaz hasn't been able to keep the fight stand. Boom! And another nice. takedown. This is a takedown clinic being put on by both fighters. Nick Diaz, like what I was saying before, is Nick Diaz has got to be very careful when he ties up with Kara. I mean, he's a world-class judo guy. I mean, we saw when he fought Dave Strasser, just incredible throws out of nowhere. And Carl was very dominant in his unanimous decision win 
couple of months ago in the WEC against Shoney Carter when he looked very, very strong. Now he's punishing Nick Diaz in the ground game. Yeah, Caro. Caro is an overwhelming guy. What he likes to do is swarm on guys and just beat them down and wear them out. He doesn't mind if he ground and pounds you, if he submits you, if he knocks you out. But he wants to overwhelm you. He's very aggressive and he wants to make you work. You don't see that. See? Oh, That's what that I'm talking about. Connected. You don't see that guy wasting any time. Now, there's no question that Nick Diaz knew that he could make the fight easier if he could keep it on the feet. Doesn't mean it's not winnable if he's not on his feet, but it would be easier if it was, as we can see right here in the first round. Yeah, I would definitely give uh, Nick Diaz the edge in standing. Unfortunately, he's not been able to keep it standing at all with Caro. Caro is uh, grounding and pounding him right now. See Gil Castillo, one of his teammates in the background. Teammate of Nick Diaz in the Caesar Gracie Academy in California. Maybe now we know what Nick Diaz was saying when he was saying he thought this was a bad matchup for him. That's, that was an interesting little turn of events. Uh, Carlos went for that uh, Kimura again. Very, well, here's Nick Diaz's world. This yeah. is where Carl's got to be careful because Carl likes to reach in. Oh, just missed with the overhand right. See, Carl is not a very good technical striker. He's very aggressive. He can hit hard, but he's not the same kind of striker that Nick Diaz is. The more time he spends standing up, the more he's in danger. He's a wild man. He just wings. He's got to be careful of that uppercut when he's coming in. Diaz has that unorthodox strike pose, too. Lands nice a knee move. on Parisian. This is Nick Diaz's now world. Straight left. Nick Diaz is a very tall guy, too. For 170 pounds, he's six feet tall. Final 10 seconds of the round. Diaz trying to score some points. The looper lands. Wow. And another combination. Amazing. Absolutely spectacular. Amazing. Kyle oh, Parisian. On feet here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Let's take a look at the replay. A takedown clinic put on by these guys. This is the Kimura. Nick Diaz has got the Kimura, which is Caro's favorite move, but Caro's has him mounted. It's a very weird position. What Nick is trying to do is get some sort of a, a half guard or something where he can control him. Here's Nick Diaz's knee. Didn't quite make it. And Carlos is winging punches. Again, Nick Diaz is uh, the more technically proficient striker, but Caro is just wild. Just standing in the pocket and throwing bombs. Second round. Are you ready? Let's go! Hey, here we go. How quickly will Parisian go for the takedown here, do you suspect? Well, also there's a matter of, is he tired? I mean, it, it, we've already gone through a full hard round of fighting, and uh, does he have the same explosive snap to reach it? And there he goes, he answered my question. Yes, he does, clearly. Very aggressive takedown. Oh, nice sweep. Beautiful sweep by Nick Diaz. Now on his back. Diaz looking strong. Oh, now Nick Diaz has Carlos back. You may be right about the fatigue factor here, Joe. But look at this. Carl rolls into a Kimura. Unbelievable. That's Beautiful. Carl's That's Carlos' move right there. Absolutely. This is bad, but Nick Diaz is no stranger to the Kimura. And Nick Diaz has Carlos back. What, a, what an amazing shift of position. And Carl rolls him over again. And lands some nice knees. For those who understand the idiot of what we just saw, that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's uh, that's two beautiful, you know, technicians at work right there. That's beautiful technique. I'm sure they're both pretty impressed with each other right now. This is a battle. You know, maybe oftentimes we've overused the word chess match, but this truly is a chess match right yeah, now. Yeah, clearly, especially on the ground. Standing up, not so much. Standing up, it's sort of like Nerf football. <laughs> you might get tackled, but the ball's not going to hurt. Yeah, right now, it's uh, no one's landing anything standing up. And the punches they're landing are these uh, awkward slaps, but it, it's probably because they're worn out. I mean, this is a this is a pretty heavy battle right here. It's a war of attrition. Nice right hand by Nick Diaz inside. You do know when those Nerf footballs get wet, though, then they actually do get heavy. Sure do, especially when you freeze them. <laughs> I'm from Boston, man. Yeah, you are. Wicked cold air. Frozen Nerf footballs hurt, trust me. <laughs>
some frozen knees right now and some body shots. Diaz on to Carl Parisian. Yeah, Nick Diaz would probably, probably be in his best interest to step he's away trying here. To get, he's trying to get notice of Yamasaki. That's and he's going to step problem. in. Thumb in the eye. Thumb in the no, eye. No, no, no. I think, there's some, I think his glove came off his thumb. Okay. I don't know what that was. That looked like it might have been a contact lens or something. Well, whatever it was, he jumped in. They fixed it quickly. 2.45, and now the clock will count down again. Wow. Carl's doing his best to try to take it down, but this is where it runs into trouble. This is where it can be dangerous, because he's reaching. He's reaching trying to get a hold of Nick Diaz. See this? He's not coming in front punches. And there he goes. Big, wide, looping shot. Joe, it seems right here as if, if there was any trepidation, and we heard it in the voice of Nick Diaz about this opponent early, as now he's in the octagon with them, there isn't as much trepidation. Nick looks much more comfortable. Hey, he looks comfortable, but, you know, still, when the, these guys are on the ground, they're just swapping positions. He's not able to control Carl. Carl's not able to control him. Here, he's at an advantage. Well, he's got the reach, and that's one thing. He can snap that left. He does not look as sharp with his hands, though, as he did when he fought Robbie Lawler. No, not at all. He might have, knowing he was going to fight Carl, he might have uh, taken more time to grapple in this fight. Who knows? Carl's uh, actually calling him in. Oh, there's a right by Carl Parisian. Diaz blocked that one. A cut above the nose of Diaz. I've just been informed that that was Carl Parisian's contact lens that he lost. So when we're seeing him standing in front of Nick Diaz right now, he might actually be seeing him kind of blurry. He just hopes he can continue to see him. It's amazing that he can try to fight with contact lenses at all. Oh, nice leg kick by Nick Diaz. Well, if he gave a slight edge in control to Parisian in the first, you've got to give a slight edge so far here in the second to Diaz. Carl is getting bloodied up, and he doesn't have the energy to swarm in and try to take Nick Diaz down like he did before. And Diaz smells it. Carl is wide open here. Yeah. Diaz smells the opening. There's a left and a right in a combination. Parisian. Diaz's punches seems like he's really pushing it, though. It looks like he's really fatigued. Carl lands a right hand. And it has to come across again. I mean, Nick is landing shots, but he doesn't have a lot of steam on him. And you know what? When Carl ducks down to throw that looping right, Nick is so tall, it hits him in the shoulder. It doesn't hit him in the head, Joe. Yeah, and Carl's throwing wide arm punches that don't have a lot of power. He's got to go. Oh, right when I said it, he rocked him. That was a nice shot. He must have heard me. Final 12 seconds of round number two. Ah, yeah, there he goes. And a takedown. And a nice takedown by Carl. The one thing Carl Parisian has got is heart. You know, you got to really take this guy out. We saw that with his fight with George St. Pierre. He was bloodied. He was losing the battle standing up, but he never stopped coming forward. Well, Parisian said he hates talk. It's like a freaking soap opera was his exact quote when people talk before a fight. Carl Parisian and Nick Diaz. There's Parisian. His opponent in the black trunks, Nick Diaz, 2-0 in ready? the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Third and final round. Now standing up right now, Nick looks like he's got a lot more zip on his punches already. He recovered. Nice knee by Caro. Nick seems to be very comfortable. Here. Nice takedown defense. Caro's doing a good job. Oh, we got tagged there. Let's say they make it this final five minutes. I know we'll see what happens here, but who has the edge at least up to this point in your mind? It's very close. Um, I, I get the second round to Nick Diaz because of the striking. The first round could go either way. And it's funny, even that flurry late by Parisian may have gained him a point even in losing the round. It could turn out to be big late. No, absolutely. Third and final round. Diaz almost Diaz. wants to get back to the feet. Looking for a sweep or something. Oh, he's looking for a triangle. Kyle Parisian's very good defense here. 
Nick Diaz is working for the bottom. Carl's trying to ground and pound him. Come on, guys. Keep on busy. Keep on busy. Judo, Gene LaBelle, Caesar Gracie. <laughs> Some of the men involved with these two young prodigies, both only 21 oh. years old. And Pretty now amazing. Parisian turning up the heat, no yes. pun intended. Absolutely, Nick Diaz stands up. He's got to do something. I was about to say, he's got to do something at this point. He's losing this round. Taro just keeps pushing forward. He just tries to break you. Just keep pushing forward. Nick Diaz goes for the Kamara again. And this time he's got it in the guard. This is very dangerous. If he can stretch it out, if he can lock him up and stretch it out, this is a very dangerous spot for Carl. He lost it. Yamasaki stands up the fighters as a mouthpiece was lost. Yeah, mouthpiece. The mouthpiece of Carl Parisian, and this will actually this perhaps work to the disadvantage guys. of Parisian because he had the control. Ready. Ready. Let's go. We may be dead even. Fight may go to who takes it from here, Joe. It's very possible. It's anybody's fight at this point. Carl Parisian just wades in, ducks his head, and throws crazy punches. Nice takedown. Yep. Nice. So the mouthpiece coming out doesn't work against Parisian, in that I'm saying it could have given Diaz some more time on his feet. Parisian gets the takedown successfully, rather quickly after the stoppage. Nick Diaz keeps looking for a triangle or an arm bar or something. There he goes again, throwing it over. But he doesn't have control over Carl's body. Nice roll. A little smack on the way up. Now this is when nice. Parisian likes to come down hard with the right. Diaz on his feet, but not for long. Good control by Carl Parisian. Nick Diaz looks like he's going for an Oma Plata or a Gogo Plata. Oh, he lost it. Kyle just keeps pushing. You can kick when you're down and the other man's up. You can't kick when you're up and the other man's down. As we saw a moment ago from Diaz. You can kick to the legs. Right. Good takedown defense by Cairo. The legs are okay. The rest is no longer within the rules. Look for a takedown. Uh-oh. He's separated. Nice punches by Nick Diaz. Legs and body, when a man is down, no kicks to the head of a down opponent. Nick Diaz tried to throw a knee and he almost got taken down for it. Doesn't seem to have a whole lot of sting in his punches at this point. This has been a grueling fight for these guys. Wow. And a nice takedown, good roll by, by Nick Diaz. And we've seen all facets. We've seen them work their hands, their feet, the body, and the ground game. Truly defining mixed martial arts. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to watch if you don't, if you're not a student of the ground game, you don't really understand what's going on. You say, well, they're kind of like rolling around. What's happening here? It doesn't look like much. But if you if you understand jujitsu, if you understand grappling, there was a lot of transitions going on there. A lot of thinking, a lot of scrambling and adjusting, and a, and a big battle for control. Parisian trying to finish strong and gain himself a decision. Ten seconds remains. I gotta give this round to Caro. Caro got a bunch of takedowns and he's he's doing the most damage. It's close, but I would give him that round. This is anybody's fight. Wow. This is anybody's fight. We will render the judge's decision. An excellent bout. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you feel like you won and the judges say the other guy won. I mean, it's just uh, decisions, it, decisions are weird. That's why submissions and knockouts are so special. That's a beautiful takedown by Caro. And his Nick Diaz Kimura attempt. And he winds up mounted by Caro. Here's some of the wild exchanges these guys had. Nice knee. 
Let's take a look around two. Kimura attempt by Carl. He rolls into it. Nick Diaz has his back briefly. Nice right hand by Caro. And a takedown. And round three, Parisian really pushed the heat. Sure, those takedowns, I would have to probably give it to Caro. Bruce Buffer has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for these UFC welterweight warriors. After three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Judge Dolby Shirley scores the bout 29 28 Diaz. Judge Cecil People scores the bout 29 28 Parisian. And Judge Marcos Rosales scores the bout 30-27 for the winner by split decision, 